So who, who are listening to it? And it's bro- Mohammed Hijab taught his song to a Christian guy. I'll just see what the title is. Doesn't it in Islam? Doesn't it in Islam? Not too sure, doesn't it? Say. Have you notice he puts his hand on the guy's shoulder? Yeah, yeah, that's his, that's his way of doing it. Passive aggressive, isn't it? Yeah. So, passive aggressive, Mohammed Hijab, when you put your hand on someone's shoulder. Yeah. Another thing as well, the, the Quran cannot be understood. No one can understand the Quran except Allah, so how can it be the book that makes things clear? And how can it be the book that corrects the previous scriptures when we can understand the previous scriptures but we can't understand this? Yeah, good enough. Okay. What is- A bit noisy this video. Yeah, put, put one up. Get one a more clear, right? Uh, what about speaking with an ex Muslim or. Come on, Chris. Yeah. He might be Christian. Oh, he's a deist, so he's not. Not. Let me come and find one now with a Christian. Oh, that's a good day. Ah. What's that one? Was the Quran copied from the Bible? It is Muhammad Ijab. Yeah. And here's one with another guy there we could look at. How right. to just, just do this one. Just, just do it. Yeah. The key question is, what he said there, sure. Do you think the Quran is the, 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 uh, the product of a human mind? It's interesting that most of the Quran has been copied from the Old Testament. I like this, I like this point. It's interesting that most of the Quran has been copied by the Old Testament. From the Old Testament. Sorry, from the Old Testament. But that Prophet Muhammad forgot to copy Job chapter number 9, verse number 6, where it talks about the flat earth and the pillars of the earth. Let's it's stop that. that. Let's stop that. So what do you reckon of that? Uh, yeah, he's talking about the John 9 verse 6, which is, talk- I don't know, he seems to mention it's to do with flat earth. Yeah, well, you you studied that there's lots of scripture where it talks about the the earth's sphere. Yeah, in Job it says the earth, he sits enthroned above the sphere of the earth. Yeah, so he's, he's wrong about that, so go on, bro. Talk about no, no, no. the four corners it's of the earth, but it's just yes, a magic yes. manner of speaking. No, no, no. It doesn't, no, no, it talks about pillars of the earth as well. It's interesting that the Quran had copied from the Old Testament, but that the Prophet Muhammad really had forgotten to copy those those uh, those verses in Genesis. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, I think we are some weird stuff, though. No, no, let me just finish my point. Like it's interesting that he forgot to copy that part, I mean, which refers to an unbelievable, and I don't mean it in a in a complimentary way, and, and primitive of understanding of how uh, how the universe started. It's interesting really. Sure, so, so the, right, the do you want to stop that a minute? What do you think yeah, of that? It's talking so, nonsense, isn't it? So, when we look at the uh, the Quran, right, when you read the Quran and I read the Quran, does it come across you as a book that's original or full of plagiarism? Plagiarism. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's not only got the Old Testament, but it's got... Um, infant jesus stories it's got the talmud in it it's got all sorts of books yeah that it's 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 robbed and these stories are very similar um like the story about solomon and the fights with the flying birds and things like that so yeah 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 so there's clear plagiarism and even in the quran the quran acknowledges and says that muhammad was accused of plagiarism so for him to then start attacking the bible doesn't get away from the accusation of plagiarism. Doesn't so, any, any thoughts from that? <coughs> yeah, using the Bible <coughs> to defend the Quran and saying that, the, well, the, what they're saying is, well, the Bible's got defects in it and the Quran hasn't. It's not a defence because when we look at stuff and say, well, we believe this is the defect and they can't defend it without attacking the Bible, that's a poor defence to use yeah, on a book. Yeah. If your book's so perfect, it should be defended without referring to ours, because according to that, my yeah. book isn't reliable. But you get a mixed view on the Bible of Muslims. Some will say, well, some of it's the Word of God, and the rest of it is not. If it agrees with the Quran, we believe it. If it doesn't agree with the Quran, we reject it. And there is problems with having that methodology, but it seems there's a lot of confusion there. And, and the issue about creation, where he says it's unbelievable... 
Well, the Quran says creation was six years, six thousand years, and then another piece of the Quran says it was eight. Uh, sorry, six days, and then another piece says eight days. So there's contradiction there, but there's nothing. If you believe that there is a God, God yeah. can do anything, and so the, the creation account is well within the ambit of God being able to do that. So it, it's a silly argument to try and attack the creation account. It's just appealing to prejudice to people who were uh, who seem to be educated today who would read it and say it was primitive but are not willing to be open-minded about the actual fact that creation could have only had a beginning by a supernatural god yeah yeah so i mean there's no creation story really in the quran it just doesn't even tell you any kind of structure of how things came into being like the bible goes into a lot more detail about mm. You know, God talks about herbs and seeds and the seas were made and the dry land and plants, whatever, and the beasts of the field. <clears throat> and it and it also, in the Bible, it talks about the dwelling places of certain animals, which if you look on, on the net, they actually do dwell in these places. For example, the stork lives in, is it the stork? The mountain goat or something, you know, you'll find that there is mountain goats and it talks about the location of where a stork lives. Well, when you look, when you type the name out of the Bible into Google, you'll find that's where they live today, in these locations. These are where certain animals live. Amen, amen. And the Quran doesn't even give you that kind of detail. So what do you mean? Is our account is wrong and primitive? Either? Amen, amen. So let's go next one. So. I'll just stop there one minute. To saying that the there's a distinction between Pharaoh and the king, but the, it means the same thing. Yeah. Biblically, I think Pharaoh was known as the king, wasn't he? King Pharaoh. Yeah. So that title is not wrong in what they're saying. It's well, I'll give you I'll give you a rundown on it, on that. So the, the saying there's a that the Bible is using Pharaoh or king at the wrong time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and they're right. saying the Quran has got it right. And that. But first of all. Uh, if you read the passage about uh, Joseph, it uses Pharaoh and King intermittently. Mm, yeah. Right. So it's a wrong. It's an unfair argument. Yeah. Because it's saying, well, it's using Pharaoh, yeah. and it's got it. Uh, it's using uh, the word Pharaoh rather than King. Yeah. But it's not. It, it's intermittent Pharaoh and King. And if you go back even to the most ancient times, yeah. even to the most ancient times when the word um king was used the still pharaoh as a word was used yeah yeah right yeah. but in the early times uh pharaoh it was king used most but pharaoh didn't have the same kudos it was only later yeah right but it still was used even in the most earliest times yeah. and the bible there actually is showing you that they were used intermittently which is actually the case in history. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so the Quran's wrong, isn't it? So the Quran is wrong, and they're wrong in using the argument, and they're wrong in they don't understand the actual history of that word if you go back into history and scholarship on that. Yeah. Okay. So what else he says about it? Yeah, it's like Britannica right now, and you research this term. The term Pharaoh comes from the word para. This, when they have discovered the Rosetta Stone, you know about the Rosetta Stone they discovered, right? Uh, uh, the Rosetta 
Cobblestone, yeah, written in, cop in uh, yeah. Greek uh, and ancient Egyptian. Basically, basic, long yeah. story short, um, the hieroglyph is the, the language of yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a dead language. It's been sure. a dead language for a very long time. Sure, 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 sure. This was not accessible and was not known up until about a couple of hundred years ago. Sure. Now, what they did is, from the Rosetta Stone, they were able to decipher what these hieroglyphs are. They're only able to basically, long story short, only a couple of hundred years ago, they're able to understand what these, you know, those images they find from the, the hieroglyphics. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. What it would mean. Okay. What they discovered was that the term pharaoh comes from the word para. It means uh, the ruling area. So, sure. right? The kingdom. Like the White House you have. Ah, right? stop. Uh, when he just said that means the word pharaoh means someone from a ruling area of kingdom. He mentioned the word kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Now, what do kings rule over? Kingdoms. Exactly. He's yeah. just dropped himself in it. Yeah. And and basically, what he what he's giving is pseudo scholarship. If you go into the Scot, if you go, if you look at Egyptologists and the Egypt Egyptology scholarship, and you look at what they say about the history of the word, yeah. this what he's saying is pseudo scholarship. Yeah, you know, it, he's just trying to persuade people about the position. This is not Mohammed Hijab at the moment, no. so we'll hear what he has to say. Yeah. <laughs> Instructions issued by the White House. The White House? Commanded. Just go back, you're in the kingdom the one kingdom, as well. Like the White House you have, right? Sorry. Um, Just go back to 12. They're only five. able to basically, long story short, only a couple hundred years ago, they're able to understand what these, you know, those images they find from the, the hieroglyphics, stuff, yeah, yeah. Not what they would mean. Okay. What they discovered was that the term pharaoh comes from the word para. It means uh, the ruling area, so, right? The kingdom, like the White House you have. So, right? uh, when they say that this this is this instruction was issued by the White House, so, it's not referring to a man, is it? It's referring to George. So, 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 so. But they, they mean the, the establishment of the White House, so, the ruling era. That's what you would call pharaoh. Right. You would not call a man pharaoh. Okay. It, would be, it would be historically in Africa. So, 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 so. so it's like imagine a thousand so years. So the fact that he called it a king. So yeah, aren't yeah, men uh, aren't kings and men are they? It, it, the, the guy, the guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, hieroglyphics were interpreted, yeah, only recently. But the history of the word goes over thousands of years. It's much more complex than he's actually yeah. presenting. You know, he's just presenting a very Islamic apologetic pseudo scholarship. Yeah. You know, he doesn't really. He's not really gone into the history of the word. No, he's not researched it, has he? And the Bible actually uses the words intermittently, so you can't accuse the Bible of getting it wrong. Exactly. And thirdly, how can the Quran then be copied from the Bible? I don't know. So this guy doesn't know much really, does he? He's, he's no, of... that's setting it up, yeah. <laughs> See what Muhammad is doing. Basically, he's referred to as a pharaoh. Sure, sure. He said if you go to the uh, yeah, 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 the Britannica now, means. Just stop it there. Yeah. Now he's saying he's referred to pharaoh, but if you look, he's also referred to as king. Mm, yeah. So it's in intermittent to use the word. It is. Yeah. He just dropped himself in. I'd have pulled him on that, but I'd have said, "Listen, you've just said pharaoh can mean somebody who's a ruler or of a kingdom. Well, kings rule over kingdoms. We yeah. know that." So the Bible's right in using it intermittently, and the Quran's wrong by using just the one word. Yeah, yeah. So oh. the Quran's obviously plagiarised it. <laughs> the Bible got it wrong. Sure, sure, sure. The Quran got it right. Sure. According right. to the historical record, Bible. and this language is a dead language. Sure, sure, sure. So really, we can't say that the Quran copied. If we say the Quran copied from the Bible, cool. then why did it copy this? And how did he know to make a distinction? I don't know. I don't know. Could yeah. it have been a mistake? Just the flu. So, yeah, we look at things. Which the Quran's really got copied it and got it wrong. <laughs> it's the Quran. <laughs> Is the Quran a historical book? Exactly, yeah. Like it's it's not, is it? No. And in addition, those historical facts that he just added to that. Sure. And in addition to that, you could say there's a whole layer of argument of the inconsistencies of the theological beliefs of, of the Christians. All of this is sift. And you could say the result of that sift is the pure, divine, Knowledge Quranic of message. Okay, yeah. Cool, yeah. So, the Quranic message. Do you see how that's a strong argument? Sure. Yeah. Sure. But, um, What's he again, saying? Like, he's saying, he's, he's saying uh, the, 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 theolog the theological position of the Christians is inconsistent. And then he was going on about the, 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 can you not see that as a weakness? In the, the, see that the Quran, in, the, the Quran is making a strong argument against the Bible by getting history right and all that stuff. Uh, and he's going, yeah, sure. Like, doesn't really know. Just to say, 
it says this uh, Matthew twenty three thirty five. Jesus said that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous bloodshed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Bekiah, whom you murdered between the talp and the altar. So in Matthew twenty three and thirty five, and everywhere when Jesus speaks about the Old Testament, he sees it as inspired. Yeah. Exactly. So if they believe he's a prophet, we believe he's more than a prophet, a son of God. How can they question the Old Testament? Yeah. When Jesus never questioned it <coughs> and always accepted it as the word of God. Yeah, exactly. So we'll hear about his theological position, the problems of the theology. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's another uh, debate there, either. how to dispute the Bible or to that one as well. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Do you notice he's got a young Christian there doesn't know anything? Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. So it's an easy target, isn't it? You know what I mean? Easy, easy target. What we could do when we go on Hyde Park, this particular subject, we could take that to him on the hijab and expose him on the camera and have that out with him. Yeah. I'll really yeah. have him out on that one. Let's have a look at this one. How to disprove the Bible we want to argue them. I don't think so. <laughs> I could do that with Quran if I wanted to. This is easy peasy folks. This is a Mohammed hijab night. Yeah. Do you know what I was just saying to you? What's your name again one time? What's he got the mic for? He thinks he's working for the BBC. <laughs> And you know why I respect that? I do really respect that because in the West that we've had this kind of revolution, Enlightenment period and right. scientific revolution, that's what right, just stop things it there. Yeah, yeah. So he, he thinks he's some kind of pseudo intellectual now. Yeah. The Enlightenment, post Enlightenment. Yeah, yeah, you're done it with his Yeah and all that. Yeah. Uh, have you read Kant's Critique of Pure Reason, sir, Mohammed Hijab? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go on, bro. Which in a way, which doesn't fit the classical exegesis, uh, which is actually for it, it's, it's not in line with yeah. He's got full control of the conversation. So he's not actually really being challenged. Yeah. He's not like asking a question, then someone ask him a question. Yeah. He's like on his soapbox, and whoever's listening there, the Christian whoever, Yeah. he's basically got them banged to rights, because he's just got complete control of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like if he was debating us. I know, yeah. We'd have him on that, yeah. we'd pull him on that. So now he's doing his huggy huggy stuff, isn't he? I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm gonna hug you, hug you, love bomb you, and then whack you over the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The point I was gonna make was just this one point. I'm not saying that science, just as a disclaimer, as a caveat, I'm not saying that science is the measuring stick by which in Jewish we can identify whether religion is true or not true in, an, in, a, in a complete sense. I think that would be an extreme case. And the reason why that is, is because I believe that science goes through. You come here, this guy's going mad. This guy's going mad. Uh, I believe that science can have what, what Thomas Kuhn called, you know Thomas Kuhn, he's a philosopher of science, he said science can have like paradigm shifts. But having said that, I think that there are some rudimentary facts of science that we can all agree to. And one of the things that I think is quite rudimentary is the, uh, is the shape of the earth. Would you agree with me that the shape of the earth is round? Yeah. You said that the earth is round. Yes. Are you certain about that? Because I was asking this to this, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because I was asking two Christians here. Um, and I asked them how old is the universe? They, they replied by saying six thousand years old. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you believe in six thousand? I'm not entirely hundred percent decided and I will research it but I'll help Oh yeah, I, that's my the current stance. What's your background, by the way? What do you do? In what sense? Like, do you do what? Uh, do you go to school, like uni or something? Yeah, I, uh, I go to school. I go to secondary school. Oh, okay, fine. I don't think you go to secondary school, man. Unless you, are you 
Job 9 verse 6 is quoting. Yeah. Should we have a look at it? Quick look at it. Uh, if you go in the front room yeah. and get it there, there should be a Bible in the front room, a small one. So we're looking at Muhammad Hijab, folks, and just looking at what he has to say. Um, so, yeah, so just having a bit of. Have you got it? Quotes the verse. Let's see what the verse says. What is it? So Job what? Job nine verse six. I think it's just a bit past. But I think these are weak arguments, really. I think because the Bible says so much about creation. If you're going to be fair, you've got to look at all the verses. You can't just show one verse. You know what I mean? Yeah. And whenever we talk about the Quran, they expect the same charity, don't they? They expect us to look at things in context. Yeah. So. Which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. It doesn't say to say it doesn't make it flat, does it? No. So he's just twisting it, isn't he, mate? That's talking about pillars, but it doesn't mean. You cannot take that as a literal. No. Flat, can you? I mean, it's ridiculous. You can just go to the Bible commentary and that and see what that means, but there's a part of Job where it says. Um, but you, you, but you. No, it's Isaiah, I think. But you go on. He sits enthroned over the circle of the earth. It's uh, Isaiah forty twenty two. Yeah. So I mean, basically, basically, I mean, I mean, this is like silly apologetics, isn't it? I mean, he's not. There's no real scholarship going into that, saying taking one verse like that and and not even giving the context or anything. Exactly. Do you know um, what I mean? It's just ridiculous. I'll just go to Isaiah 40, 22 and see what that has to say. Just so I'm ready for when he talks his nonsense on this video in a minute. Isaiah 40, 22. Sorry, it's here. It says... It is he, this is talking about God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. So Isaiah is saying he's, God sitteth upon the circle of the earth. So that tells me that the earth is round. Yeah, so yeah, so. That's Isaiah 40. Let's see what else Hijab has to say. Because if he's just going to quote one passage, then he has to. he's going to miss this passage, I think, in this video. Yeah. He's always smiling, chilling out, isn't he? He's, he's yeah. really friendly, but you can get aggressive if you're not if you're on the back foot. Yeah, you can. Why is he asking about the age of the age? He's trying, he's, he's trying to appeal to the secularists. Right, you can see the Genesis account is ridiculous. I see. But there are many PhD scientists that believe that. So yeah. You know what I mean? No, that is making that is ridiculous argument, that isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Absolute ridiculous. Pause it. You want to pause it? Yeah. That was an absolute ridiculous argument, that wasn't it? Absolute yeah. ridiculous to say that Jesus was taken at the top and what looked down at the earth. I mean, 
The kingdoms. The guy isn't things. even worth debating, is he? No. The guy isn't even worth debating. He's 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 not even looking at scripture in a fair way. I mean, if he's going to look at scripture, he's got to look at our best commentators on that scripture, yeah. and give us what the Christian position is. He's, this is what we find. They don't <laughs> actually know our position, do they? I mean, no. if he had, we, when we look at a Quranic verse. We look at it and we make sure and check what the Islamic position is on those verses. Yeah, we would, yeah. We check it, don't we? Yeah. But they don't check what we actually say. Yeah. Or what we actually think. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, the guy shouldn't even be debating in the park. And that's ridiculous. Just because when Jesus talks about the kingdom, it doesn't mean he can see the whole of the whole, whole earth. Like, the, the majority of the earth. He's just talking about kingdoms. He's probably talking about what's in front of him you know these are the kingdoms the yeah, earth yeah but them. it's it's not like literal language though is it it's no. not like a literal scientific language exactly it's yeah. just symbolic language it's saying look he saw the whole earth it doesn't mean he say he saw it all flat it's not yeah. saying that it's That's just saying he saw the whole earth the yeah. kingdom of the whole earth it doesn't mean you know it it, it, it could be that when he was up there he was uh, talking about what he could see in front of him what he could power. see in front of him or who knows I mean he could have been up there and, and for us it might be like a minute yeah but for him because it, it was supernatural he was taken up he could have he could have like within with however long he was up there he, he saw the whole earth go round so yeah but to to assume his argument within the text is ridiculous he's doing violence to the text because the text was not even trying to say anything like that. Exactly. The context is not even about whether the earth was flat in that. Yeah. So, I mean, he's making ridiculous arguments. And if we were using that of the Quran, he'd be mocking us, wouldn't he? And I bet you, if you brought Isaiah forty twenty two to the table, he'd reject it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't understand that. You know, this is what they do. Yeah, yeah. They reject clear verses that say things, but they look at verses and make an argument out of unclear verses. Sorry, chapter number 75, verse number 3. It once again talks about the earth being flat and having pillars. If you look at the book of Acts, it talks about a big sheet coming from the... Peter was talking, he said a big sheet comes from the sky and it covers all four corners of the earth. So it's very clear here that the, the biblical depiction of the earth is a flat earth. Now, in the Quran, it says in chapter number 39, verse number 5, يُكَوْهِرُ اللَّيْلَ عَلَى النَّهَارُ وَيَكَوْهِرُ النَّهَارَ عَلَى اللَّيْلِ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ كُلُّ يَجْرِ لِأَجْرِ مُسَمَّةِ So, the scholars of exegesis of the past, the scholars that interpret the Quran of the past, they said that this verse makes it very clear that the earth is going round, uh, it, is, uh, it must be round, because of this word, taqwir, or kawwiru, in this verse. Uh, and therefore, uh, Ahmed ibn Hamad is one of them who died in 241. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is another one who's a quarter mound issue. Ibn Hazm is the third one. Uh, al Juwaini is the fourth one. And there's lots of other scholars that, that said before time, what a four time, that the earth is round. Now, I'm not saying that in Islamic literature there's not a scholar out there that says that the earth is flat and they interpret the Quran to say that. But what I'm saying is we have in our literature, those early scholars were saying the earth was round and that it returns around its own end. In the Bible, you don't have that. Ridiculous. So, just if no, you But even, just like even the Greeks and the Persians, uh, you, you know, ancient empires believed the earth was round. Yeah, but, you yeah, you know, so... To the fact that the earth is round, in the scripture that tells you clearly that the earth is flat and has pillars and there's no other way of interpreting it. Well it says in the Quran that Allah has spread the earth out like a carpet. Yeah I know, it's ridiculous isn't it? Yeah. It says, it says the earth, uh, what is it, it says the, the sun dwells in a muddy pool. Yeah and that Allah commands it going up and down. <laughs> you know like, so the Quran is a literal word of God so we have to take it literally. We don't make the claim the Bible is the, the literal the bait and word of God, we understand the allegorical language of it, you know. Yeah, you, you've got to clarify that. It's the, it is the literal word of God, but we can inter we interpret different parts of it. Yeah. There's some parts, like prophetic literature, where, or some parts that you interpret allegorically, not literally. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we, it's inspired. God's word is inspired, but it's not. You don't how the Muslims take it. You know, there's bits of it can be reinterpreted, like I said, in, in an allegorical sense. Can you 
what she's saying. Getting the Bible out. See, these Christians are not challenging him. Whereas if we were there, the guy get challenged. Some of the comments. See, he thinks he's so smart and so clever. He does, doesn't he? But the guy's, the guy's just. He's, he's intellectual grooming, he's grooming people. Yeah. He, poor, poor people have not even got a chance, they're not even challenging him. They're not, are they? 